Hello, and welcome to the Lake District on this lovely spring morning. This project is all about uh, bringing up a load of wood from a stream, which is rather inaccessible. There's quite a bit of wood on this side of the stream and also on the other side of the stream, and there's no easy access. So in order to get it up, I've repurposed uh, an old zip line, that's this green wire, and there's a little blue trolley which I welded up some years ago. So rather than a seat underneath it, I've simply got a little bag underneath in which um, wood can go. And the reason why this, I think, this project is worth uh, recording separately is that um, in order to get the uh, load up, I've brought it up with um, a continuous load of rope, um, 100 metres of double polyester rope, which goes round an idler pulley at the bottom end uh, and round a capstan winch at the top end. So this capstan winch is operating in a continuous manner as opposed to the normal manner when the, where the tail end is, um, is operated by um, a user. And a bit of electronics in there, which I'll go into later, but to make the thing go down, it's as simple as switch the thing on, which we already are, engage uh, down, need to label this, operate the uh, knob, and down we go. And the trolley is now going down to the bottom. So here we are down at the bottom end. This pile of wood has already been split into manageable chunks, ready to go up. The green support wire simply loops around a convenient tree and the uh, driving uh, rope goes around an idler pulley on the same tree and also an idler pulley on an adjacent tree which is essentially just to keep the go and the return uh, legs uh, separate. So the trolley is somewhere overhead height up there and um, underneath it we have the load that's ready to go up um, as you can see, I've got a four to one pulley system, so it's just a case of pulling on the loose end there, uh, raising the, um, the bag so it's off the ground and clears the lip at the top, and cast it off, and then we'll be ready to go for our trip up to the top station. Here we are again at the top of the lift. The red tassel up here is on the inactive side of the uh, loop. So it tells me that when the tassel's up here, the trolley is at the right place at the bottom for loading. And to bring it up, it's as simple as turn the power on, engage up, two is up, and turn the little knob. And we should hear behind us the spin cycle starting familiar noise of a washing machine. And there goes the tassel. And around here, the washing machine is doing the thing it's up the capstan winch, uh, which I will go over a bit later. And here we come, here comes the load, and the plan is to stop it pretty close to the top. There we go. Now, because I don't have a third hand to operate the handbrake, um, it's drifted back a little bit. Normally what I would do is engage it with this captain hook, which just uh, clicks around clicks around that um, the trolley and then once it's clicked on I can reduce the power and the trolley won't uh, go anywhere. So the power's nice and off, all I now need to do is uh, pull on the cord, here's the cord, pull on that one, all my, all my 30 kilograms of uh, wood is now at ground level at the top of the slope. So here is the uh, drive station uh, powered by an old Hoover washing machine. In the top we have the motor, standard universal motor. Um, on its output, difficult to see in this light, um, it's got its multi-splined uh, pulley, small pulley, which drives uh, a large pulley um, on, the, um, on the shaft of the drum. So I've kept half of the outer case. Um, the drum is in there on its original bearings. And on the front of the drum, I've simply put a ring of plywood with several bolts to hold it in place and in the middle of the drum there's a piece of stock uh, it's about three before um, and there's a square hole in the plywood plate to hold it in place and uh, I've given it some cheeks to um, hold, um, hold it all, all in place and then in the end of the stock 
um, I drilled a, a, an oversized hole and then fitted into it a piece of three quarter steel and then put some screws through the wood to, so I could adjust the or alignment of the steel to get it nicely uh, in line with the axis of the drum. And when I got that in place, um, I flooded the, uh, the gap with resin and you can just see um, a little hole at the, the top there. That's where the resin came out. I injected it at the bottom and it worked very well. My first attempt at putting resin didn't work. It didn't flow down the hole, just made a, a color at the top. But then I drilled a hole, injected it at the bottom and it came out of the various holes that I'd used to hold the screws in place. So that all worked very well. And then once the uh, shaft was in place, I was able to just put a bearing on the end, uh, mount it to um, appropriately uh, located uh, piece of wood here to the frame and then use a routing gauge to um, route out the uh, profile that I needed for the, um, for the capstan winch. Um, as we've got here, the two cheeks at the end were just put on as an afterthought um, to stop the rope uh, falling off. If I put the power on slowly, we'll be able to see what happens um, to the rope on the capstan. So it works its way across and then gets to the end and just sits there and pushes the other uh, rungs across. Works very nicely. Change to the other direction. Uh, stick on slow again. Gets to the end. Isn't quite touching the cheek, so the cheek is us there as a backstop. Um, but it works very reliably. And there's enough tension in the return leg to keep the winch uh, driving. And it might not appear that the winch is driving, but if we have a look at the trolley, Here it is coming up. If I switch over, here it is going down. So the capstan seems more than enough, more than able enough to take whatever is uh, being asked of it. One detail I forgot to mention is that at the lower end of the project there's a tensioner for the towing rope. Um, simply a container um, partly full of water and if the tension were to change on the uh, rope, if the load were to change on the rope, as you can see um, the container is just dragged up uh, and down so as to maintain a similar amount of tension on the tow rope, which is what the capstan needs up at the top. I've got a slightly improved container here for um, hold it, holding the wood. Uh, it maintains its sides open when you're loading, which makes it a bit easier. And up at the top, we have um, about 20 metres of double braided polyester rope um, just tied around the trolley out of the way because this system has about a 40 metre run each way. So the remaining 20, rather than cut them off, I just uh, wrapped them around the trolley out of the way uh, in case they're needed for the next project. Finally, this is the electrical side of things. All fairly straightforward. On the left hand side, you can see there's a mains cable coming in and then moving, moving up the line uh, connection goes up through uh, an illuminated switch and then carries on up to a standard speed control, which you can find on the web very easily, a triac, a diac, and a couple of uh, passive components for the speed control. The interrupted main signal for the variable speed comes out and picks up the center of the data winding, uh, comes back and connects into this double pole, double throw switch, which you need for uh, reversing the direction. And if you follow the wires through, you can see that when the switch is in one direction, the rotor is in series with the stator in one way around. And when the switch is thrown, the rotor is in series with the stator in the other way around. And that affects um, change of direction of the motor. So all very standard. Um, 
and I hope that that has given a good insight as to how a capstan winch can be used um, in a continuous operation in the two directions and uh, so that's uh, that's just about it um, the system's all closed down for the day now um, we've had a, a pretty good haul and um, just developing this system over a couple of days and uh, look forward to uh, lifting a lot more wood up when weather conditions allows and uh, thanks thanks for watching